Historia Spano, History Reconnaissance, and the last short-range ballistic missile in service in NATO armies from 1972 until 1992. It was intended to attack Soviet and Warsaw Pact armored units and installations beyond artillery range. The Lance missile system was designed to provide rapid reaction capability on the battlefield. It offered flexibility in terms of warhead selection. It could deliver conventional high explosive warheads or cluster bomblets and an atomic warhead with a yield of up to 100 kilotons. The Lance battery consisted of two M752 launchers with one missile each and two M688 auxiliary vehicles carrying another two missiles each. The firing rate per unit was approximately three missiles per hour. So, join us and see how this lethal weapon was deployed, taking up starting position in pre-launch preparation and firing it by remotely activating the propulsion system. And please, like, share and subscribe. It means lot to us. This lightweight, low silhouette, diesel-powered tracked vehicle has no armor, nor is it armed. There is a cab enclosure that provides protection from inclement weather for the driver and his assistant. This vehicle, when fitted with a boom crane, is called the LT, or Loader Transporter. The primary function of the LT is to self-load and transport the lance, to load mated missiles or MMAs on the launch fixture, to mate or demate missile rounds, and to perform other hoisting tasks requiring a mobile boom crane. This boom crane is mounted in the cargo section of the LT. Now this same vehicle, when fitted with a launch fixture, is called the self-propelled launcher, or SPL, and is the basic vehicle for the Lance system. On improved roads, this SPL can travel up to 40 miles per hour and is capable of extended cross-country travel over rough terrain. When the rear ramp is raised and locked in position, this vehicle is watertight so it can cross small lakes or streams. Swim vanes are used on the LT to stabilize the vehicle. When not in use, these vanes fold under the vehicle and are secured. In the cargo section of the SPL, the launch fixture serves as the platform on which the round can be elevated, traversed, and fired. This same launch fixture can be converted to the system's auxiliary configuration known as the Launcher Zero Length, or LZL. When the main missile assembly and warhead sections are transported in their individual containers, the Army 5-ton vehicle is used. The loader transporter boom operator responds to the hand signals of the section chief and a crew of four handlers is used to guide the canisters while suspended. When the MMA canister is clear of the five-ton bed, the vehicle is driven out from under the canister and pulled to a position forward of the LT. Next, the end cover of the MMA canister is removed and the side bolts loosened by the crewman. You'll notice here that the web straps are used to lift the warhead and move it for mating to the MMA. While making electrical connections, a safety block is held between the sections to prevent hand injury. When electrical connections are completed, the block is removed and the warhead is swung into place and properly aligned 
to engage and tighten the swing bolts. Four bolts secure the warhead to the MMA. All four are tightened, then torqued to specifications. Once in position over the launch fixture in the SPL, it is lowered onto the launch truss and secured by a transport lock pin, two locking arm assemblies, and the rear missile strap. Next, all guide ropes are removed, as well as the sling beam assembly. In some situations, the lance will be transloaded to the SPL in one location, then the SPL will move to a firing point. Ground guides direct the SPL onto a position over a pre-surveyed launch stake, so the towing pintle is directly over the stake. Two crew members are needed to lower the ramp, which should rest on level ground. If the ramp is not supported evenly across, it could be damaged by rocket engine blast. The SPL is now properly emplaced, and aiming equipment containers are offloaded from the SPL. Warhead straps are unfastened. The launch truss locking pin is released, and the truss is elevated to approximately 200 mils. The gunner's sighting unit, or GSU, is attached. Strict attention should be given to the proper securing of the mounting bolts during the installation. While the GSU is being installed, other crew members remove the rear missile strap and control surfaces are removed from their containers. These control surfaces will be installed prior to laying procedures. The short umbilical cable is connected to the underside of the MMA. This cable is attached to a longer one which electronically connects the missile to the monitor programmer and will quick disconnect from the MMA on launch. While laying procedures continue, the launcher specialist at the monitor programmer will first cycle the MP through the self-test and perform a safe arms check on the firing device to ensure that the MP and firing device are functioning properly. Crewmen now take the remote firing device a distance of approximately 100 meters to the firing pit in a low area or in a tree line if possible. With the GSU properly mounted, the gunner performs the bore sighting. The first task is to superimpose the reticles on the autocollimation eyepiece with those on the forward mirror bracket. When the reticles are superimposed, the chief verifies that the bore sighting is complete. Warhead settings are inserted and the missile is armed. Then the missile is elevated to the proper firing elevation. During elevation, the gunner watches the elevation bubble in order to tell the crew members when to stop. When the proper firing elevation of 48 to 54 degrees is reached, the gunner levels the cant and elevation level. This procedure is done by turning the hand wheel and the cant adjusting knob. Next, the Poro prism cover is aimed toward the remote theodolite operator. The chief of section then gives the command, the missile is ready to be laid. The theodolite operator and gunner continue working together to align the two instruments until the correct deflection is achieved to properly align the missile in the direction of fire. The section chief then uses the gunner's quadrant to ensure the missile is at the exact firing elevation and relays the command zero mils to the theodolite operator who then rotates his instrument in the direction of the test target and the platoon leader verifies that the missile is laid. At this point the monitor programmer operator cycles the monitor programmer through to the launch position 
while the GSU is removed from the missile and returned to its container. When the launch position is reached, the MP operator and the section chief verify a green go condition. Next, the upper rod of the APU is removed and both men move to the firing pit. After verifying that all crew members are in the pit, the countdown begins. The safe arm switch is placed in the arm position. The safe fire switch is placed in the fire position, which fires the Lance missile. The Lance missile, when deployed with the non-nuclear warhead, can be fired to a range of over 80 kilometers. This warhead contains over 800 fragmentation bomblets and is especially effective against soft semi-mobile targets such as assembly areas, POL and ammunition storage sites, large command posts, radar, and air defense installations. When used with a nuclear warhead, it has a much longer range. That's all folks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.